Hello, welcome to Biology for Majors. So you may be taking uh, this course for several reasons, whether you want to go to medical school or pharmacy school or graduate school, or you want to take this just as a requirement for your department. And whatever may be the reason to take this biology, approach this subject with some curiosity and to learn the mysteries of life and to understand how the processes work in living organisms. This chapter is organized into four sections. So the first part of this chapter talks about why do we need to learn biology, and the second chapter talks about the properties of living organism, and the third part of this chapter talks about how to study life, and the last part is about classifications and organization of living organism. In the first part as to why you study biology, you may remember why you're taking this class. It may be for going to medical school or to go to nursing school or a pharmacy school or just graduate school or simply that your department needs this as a course requirement. No matter what the reason is, always develop a curiosity to study biology because it is about yourself. It is about other living things in this planet. There is something very unique to planet Earth. So once you see that value in studying biology, try to understand what are the different processes that happen to make a living cell alive. Okay? And, and there are differences between simple organisms and multicellular organisms that you would see. And also you would notice that once you understand that process that you can develop several applications for medicine, agriculture, as well as for improving the environment. The second part that talks about the properties of living organisms will cover what is the difference or what are the differences between a non-living matter and a living organism. In this section, you would see the properties are considered as emergent properties because you normally don't see that when you have hydrogen and oxygen separately. You combine together, the properties of hydrogen and oxygen are no longer there, but the properties of water emerges. So that is called as an emergent property. Very similarly, the elements that make up the body may also be found elsewhere, but when they combine together to make a living organism, a new property emerge. Okay? So pay attention to that. The third part of this chapter talks about the experimental methods in biology. So there you would study the first, the model organisms. Okay, what are the model organisms such as Rhabdopsis or rice or wheat or rabbits or uh, mice? So these are the model organisms which are used as a representative organism to study uh, biologic, biological processes as well as basic chemis chemistry related to biology. Once you go past that methodology, then you would also see how to interpret the results uh, based on whether it is an in vitro study under non-living condition or in vivo study under living condition, or you're taking a part of the organism uh, such as a reductionist approach or an entire organism which is a holistic approach. Once you finish that, then you will see how am I going to interpret the results, okay? Those are the ways how you study the biology. The last part of this chapter talks about how to organize and classify living organisms, okay? To do that is basically understand, you know, how the species, okay, belong to a particular genus and a family and so on, all the way up to kingdoms and domains, okay? Lastly, you could have to understand how the biological hierarchy works. The biological hierarchy refers to how simple atoms and molecules combine to make macromolecules that combine to make different parts of the cell and a cell which could be a living organism at the unicellular level. Then you go past to multicellular organism. The cell can make a tissue, an organ, an organ system, and a multicellular organism. Then you go into population, community, and then ecosystem and biosphere. So this chapter gives you an introduction to biology as well as how to study biology as a science.